Ah, Mr. Holden, back so soon. Yep, uh, I know what you said last time, but... No need, I understand. For you, it's a hard habit to kick. Yeah, you've got that right, Doc. Sure is. So, let's take a look at this x-ray of yours, shall we? Oh, wow. This one's made it even further through your system this time, Mr. Holden. Huh, that's funny. I don't even really feel it in there. Don't let anyone tell you that size doesn't matter, especially when it comes to delicious pancake lenses like this. There are always going to be trade-offs when you opt for something smaller and lightweight, but are those trade-offs in image quality or something else? Comparing these two lenses, we have one which is a pancake 35mm f2.8 with autofocus, while the other you see here is a 35mm f1.4 with manual focus. Now the tricky thing about these two lenses is that even though they both do the same job, they're different in almost every way, so it's difficult to recommend one over the other. Obviously one is easier to swallow, but what actually makes them different? So this large lens that you see here is the Thipoc 35mm. And I've been using this lens for a few weeks now, and I have to say it is a pleasure to shoot with. And even though it is manual focus, it does a few things extremely well compared to other 35mm lenses. Along with it being manual focus, it has a certain Leica-esque aesthetic. And that's partly because Thipoc also make this lens for Leica M-mount as well as Sony E-mount. But if you're not shooting on a Leica, why would you choose this lens over a smaller autofocus lens for the same lens mount? Hang on. This isn't right. What, 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 what is it, Doc? It's... it looks like there's something else in here. We're going to need to do another x-ray from a different angle. I want to take a close look at this Thipoc lens. This is the 35mm f1.4 manual focus Cymera lens. And yes, the build quality and this additional lens hood are very much Leica worthy. We have a nicely dampened aperture ring and a lovely focus ring featuring a very nice focusing tap. But once you take a closer look at this lens, it has one unique feature that I think makes it stand out. You can see here on top of the lens, as we change our f-stop, these indents are filled with an orange dot. This operates much in the same way as most manual focus lenses. However, Thipoc have opted for a much more elegant solution, which does stand out among other manual focus lenses in terms of design. But I have to admit, it's not the easiest to be able to glance down at on the street because if you're viewing it from a slight off angle, you can't quite see those orange dots. So it's hard to line those up with the distance on your focus ring. So while it is without a doubt the prettiest stone focusing system I've ever seen, it's sometimes a little bit difficult to use, which is a bit of a letdown. Taking a look at the images from this lens, I think it performs extremely well and it feels right at home on pretty much any Sony full frame camera. But is this really the sort of lens that you can imagine taking anywhere with you, given the size and weight? As much as I appreciate the design of this lens, it's also a lens that I feel like I'd be taking extra care of so as not to damage it. On the flip side from a chunky lens like this Thipoc, we have this. The ultra lightweight Samyang 35mm f2.8. This cheap and cheerful little lens has quite the reputation among any full frame shooters for Sony E mount. And as someone who's previously owned the 24mm, I can say that I'm extremely happy with this 35mm version. When placed on this A7C2, you can see that this feels right at home in keeping with a smaller full frame setup. Even when compared to this RX1 with its fixed 35mm lens, the difference is noticeable, but it's nothing crazy. However, being a third party lens, what can we really expect from performance when you compare these two? Well, the images that you see here, I think are proof of the quality of this lens. And considering the price that you can buy this for in the used market, it feels like a no brainer. And quick tip, if you have a camera that can actually support Super 35 mode in photography and video mode, this doubles up as a 35 mil and a nifty 50 in one little package saving you both money and bag space when you're out and about. So what is it? What, what is that one? What did you find? Mr. Holden, I am sorry to say we've actually found another object in here. It's much larger. Ah, I see that. That does ring a bell. From first glance, might I ask, could you remove the square lens hood in future first? When carrying either of these lenses on a camera, either with a wrist strap or a shoulder strap, they both feel comfortable to be able to carry for an extended day of street photography. But you would notice right away that the Samyang feels much more compact and lightweight 
and you don't really worry about bumping into anything with the camera hanging around your shoulder. Whereas the Thipoc, with its heavier metal build and like longer protrusion from the camera body, you do worry a little bit more, especially given the lens hood or lens cap situation and how they can quickly pop off. I would definitely prefer the Samyang in these situations, but that's just the power of a pancake for you. Shooting side by side with these lenses, you immediately see the benefits of an autofocus pancake lens over a heavier manual focus lens. As nice as this 35mm lens is to use, it does feel like more of a task compared to this pancake. For a day of dedicated street photography, I think the Thipoc is a pleasure to use and actually changes the digital photography experience to an extent. However, if I was going to carry a lens around most of the time and be able to hand my camera over to a friend for them to use, I think this makes the most sense. Maybe these lenses are a little bit too different, and maybe the Samyang really, when paired on the A7C2, is more comparable with, say, the 35mm Zeiss lens on the RX1. I've been shooting with this RX1 35mm Zeiss lens, but actually I've been having to use kind of a makeshift zone focusing setup because of the horrendously outdated autofocus system on this RX1 from 2012. Which of course, the A7C2 paired with the Samyang do not suffer from the same problem. Surely though, a Zeiss lens with its alluring blue badge is going to perform much better than a cheap, budget-friendly Samyang. Well, let's see about that. Looking at images from both of these lenses, albeit both from Sony cameras that happen to be over 10 years apart in release, the optical differences that you're seeing are not massive. However, I feel that the way that I shoot with both of these lenses is actually quite different, even though they're both autofocus 35mm lenses. Partially down to the size and ergonomics of the cameras that I'm using them on, and also partially down to the poor autofocus on the RX1, which means that I end up shooting with it in kind of a makeshift zone focusing way. This particular Zeiss lens, which you'll find on the RX1 cameras, is unique in being so compact with a wide f2 aperture. Once you look into interchangeable 35mm lenses from Sony or Zeiss, you'll see that size increase to a decent amount. One of the big benefits of being able to pair up a small lightweight lens like this with the a7C is being able to put this in a small bag, and then if you can carry an ND filter with you, having the ability to shoot both photo and video with one very small setup. Plus, when you actually use this lens for video, you can go into crop mode, into 50mm, and then use clear image zoom in 4K to get up to 75mm. So you've actually got a 35mm to 75mm in one tiny pancake lens, which is actually awesome. Okay then, with this prescription, they should slip out in a few days. All right. For you, well hopefully next time I can just plop them out like that. How about we actually try and avoid there being a next time? Heh, <laughs> good try doc. If you know me, it's only a matter of time before this beautiful thing finds its way down there. <laughs> Mr. Holden.